That was fun yesterday, huh? Yes. Yeah. Getting in mm-hmm. at midnight. Yep. It's so nice to see fun. you, Ellie. Thank you. It's nice, nice to be back. Nice yeah. of you to join us <laughs> from, <laughs> from L.A., from your little Shangri-La. Yeah. Even though you didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> it was really hard. Had the a last hard place day you want to be right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's great to be back. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to have you both together. Today, we are doing the summer recap episode with the Toxic Twins. Here we go. <laughs> Ellie and Mia are here in the house today. <laughs> hey. Let's rock. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. Welcome back, All-Stars, to another exciting episode. As you can see, we're all sort of crammed and comfy here on the couch. We have the two younger girls in the Gordon clan with us today. Ellie, say hi to the people. Hi, guys. Great to be back. And Mia, of course. What up, All-Stars? Missed you all. (laughs) We have actually been having a good time with Mia this past week. Ellie has decided to finally grace us with her presence. Yes. From Los Angeles, <laughs> fresh off the plane. Yeah, she has spent the whole summer in Los Angeles. Yep. So instead of opting to skip town with us, she said, what's it, sayonara? Is that how you say it? Sayonara? She's still bitter, I think. She's oh, still yeah. a little She's bitter. Sure. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of bitterness in there. Yeah. <laughs> and so she was like, basically, it was like, I'm not hanging with you. You sold my house. I'm going back to LA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that I did. <laughs> Seems that about right. Did. So uh, tell us, how's Los Angeles been this summer? What have you been up to? Los Angeles was so much fun. Um, I pretty much just spent the entire summer couch surfing with a bunch of my friends. I swear, I spent a night with every person I ever met in LA once, at least. Um, But it was so much fun. All my friends finally got back in like the month of July from like all their trips and everything that they were doing. So I got like a good month and like a few weeks with everyone that I was really missing. But Honestly, it was just really nice to be back. Um, I missed all my friends a lot. And so um, when a bunch of them offered for me to come stay with them for a few days anyways, I was like, why not just buy a one way and spend my whole summer there? (laughs) Nice. When did you decide to go? How far into spring were you? Because we had talked about you coming with us and going maybe to Texas to visit Parker and just hanging out here and, you know, in Florida, if that's where we were going to be, because we weren't sure either. Yeah. We, we even talked about doing an East Coast run. So we, we did. Talked yeah. About you that. were supposed to be in the Carolinas with us and yeah. all kinds of good so stuff. What, where in the spring did you decide, you know what, I'm going to ditch my parents and I'm going to go hang out in Los Angeles for the summer? Um, I think it was like three weeks before summer even started. Like it was, it was very late on because I was kind of on the fence. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to go back to LA. Um, but then I was in between for most of spring, I was in between, um, switching schools, colleges, and I wasn't sure I, I was in between knowing if I was going to switch or not. So I wasn't sure of my plan because if I stayed at my original school, then I would have had to go go back about a month earlier than if I left and went to my other school. Um, so that changed a lot of plans. But as soon as I found out I was going to be switching schools, that gave me an extra month of summer. And I think after you like you guys weren't entirely sure of the plan and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go to L.A. for about a month anyways. And so then it was actually mom who suggested it to me. She was like, why don't you just go for the month of June and then come back? And then I ended up just buying the one way and then I stayed there the whole summer. (laughs) So let's catch everyone up because you you mentioned it. Go ahead. Yeah. So let's talk about that because when we last caught up with you, you were talking about the highs and lows of being a division one athlete. And uh, I know that you guys had a rough season at Seattle U. You probably don't want me to talk on the show about what a dumpster fire that was, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh, ultimately, you decided that not only did you want to play for a different school, but you wanted to chase a higher academic institution as well. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I think on the last podcast I was on, I talked a lot about the time commitment of being a D1 athlete and 
for those of you who don't know, my off season schedule, we were still doing like four hour practices every morning, Monday through Friday. So even though I was in my off season, there was never really an off season. Um, and I think I always knew I loved playing, but I was never very interested in playing professionally or playing overseas. That wasn't something I like saw myself doing. And so after a while, I just was like, there's, I was really unsure of what I wanted to do academically. I didn't love the classes that I was taking at Seattle and I just felt like it wasn't the right environment for me. And so I was like, I am so unsure about all these things with like my academics and my career, but I am sure that I don't want to play professionally. So what's the point in me dedicating all this time to playing if I know I don't want to play after college? So I was like kind of rethinking everything when it came to like where I wanted to go to school. And I kind of was looking back at colleges that I really wanted to go to before I decided I wanted to play volleyball super competitively. And so then I was thinking and there was always this one school that I genuinely did love. And I was like, oh, like I would always think about that school. Even when I was in Seattle, I was like, I wonder what my life would have been like had I gone there, had I maybe like pursued that a little harder the way that I pursued Seattle. And so I was like, okay, like why don't I, ju I just apply to that school, see if I can get in, see if I can get the money that I need. And I honestly, when I applied and I got in, I was kind of in this mindset where I was like, okay, I wasn't even sure I was going to get in again because it was a really high academic school and I wasn't sure if I, you know, if I would even get in. So I was kind of in the mindset of like, you know, I'm staying here and I'm going to make this work and I'm like willing to put in the effort. And it actually, it was getting a little better. Um, but then I got in and I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and so, um, so then I just honestly decided to just like take that step. You know, I had always wondered what it would be like if I played um, sports at a division one school and I got that experience and I'm super grateful that I did, but I don't think in the long term it was sustainable for me. And I think being able to recognize that and know like, okay, I did this for a year. I have great experiences, great memories. Um, but ultimately this isn't where I see myself long term. Um, it made it a lot easier to kind of take a step away and realize that I didn't have to stay somewhere I wasn't completely happy. So yeah, so I will be transferring. Nice. So uh, don't keep us in suspense any longer. Oh. Tell everybody <laughs> where you're going. I'm going to Trinity College in Connecticut. I'm so excited. I actually move in in a week from now. And I think it'll be a really, really great fit. I loved the campus. I loved the team, loved the coach. The coach has been trying to recruit me for like two years almost. So I knew that her effort in pursuing me really meant that she wanted me there. And I think it felt really, really nice to just be in an environment where I could tell people really wanted me there. And it wasn't just, you know, another like body to play with or just another number on the roster. Um, and one of my best friends from high school, Lucy already goes there. We both applied there our senior year together. And then I ended up just taking a different path with volleyball. But then I was like, you know, I love Lucy and we're so similar and Lucy loves it. And, you know, when I visited, I loved it. I didn't want to go back to Seattle. So I was like, why not? Like, so you recently had the opportunity to go there for a weekend. How was that? That was so much fun. It was very, very different from the environment I was currently at because I was going to school in like downtown Seattle. There was a lot going on. There was never really a huge campus feel at my other school. Um, it was a city school. Yes. Which was cool. And that definitely like had its own perks, but then going to a like smaller college where the entire appeal of going there is like the college feel that was very different. And that was honestly something I didn't expect to like so much because applying to schools, I was very like, okay, I'm not going to rush a sorority. I'm not really into the whole like big 10 football school. Like that wasn't a priority for me, but being on campus where everyone's like a third of the student body does sports and people always go like go to each other's sports game and like school spirits really big there because it kind of has to be because it's a college town um, or a college feel like that was something I actually really, really liked and was like, I could really see myself fitting in really well here. That was something I never really got at Seattle because again, it's a city school. Not a lot of people lived on campus. It was kind of really hard to make 
connections with people who didn't immediately live close to you on campus. Sure. So I think that was just something that like really appealed to me that I was surprised about. But honestly, now that I'm thinking back, like it makes a lot of sense because a big complaint I had about Seattle was that there was like a lack of community. I felt very lonely there. And so for some reason, I didn't think that maybe I would be drawn to a school where community is like the number one priority where a lot of people know each other and, you know, just like that was kind of something that I really, really liked about it. I loved like the location of the campus because it's in Hartford, Connecticut. It's in Hartford, Connecticut, because as much as I'm willing to step away from living downtown in a city, I don't think I was willing to be in the middle of nowhere. And so I got to look around Hartford a lot. It's obviously not Seattle, but I wasn't expecting it to be like that. But it definitely has some attractions where I'm like, this will keep me busy enough, like what I need. Okay. And I'll be traveling all the first semester with volleyball anyways. So I think it'll be nice to have the second semester to really enjoy just kind of being home and being stable. Um, but two of my really good friends live in New York and it's like an hour and 40 minute train right away. Super cheap. So I'll yeah. be going and visiting them and they'll be visiting me. And so it's like, it's another hour away from Boston the other way. So if I need a quick city fix, I can go for a day trip. Sure. Um, which and you're I in a conference where you're going to be, you're in the NESCAC conference, mm-hmm. which means you're going to be like hitting all these different places mm-hmm. in the New England states, right? Yes. My first game is in Brooklyn. So it's like. Uh, it's in Brooklyn. I'll be playing in Boston. I'll be playing in like other schools in other Connecticut, s- other schools sure. in Connecticut for sure. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool. It's it's 20 minutes away from one of our schools in the conference, Wesleyan. Um, and then it's 20 minutes away from Yale. So if I wanted to go and like just get yeah. a feel for that, I could go yeah. there too. So I thought I thought it like was honestly a really good mix of everything that I had wanted in a school. And even though I'm very nervous about it, I'm like nervous for all the right reasons. I'm not nervous because I feel like I made a wrong choice, That's which great. I think is easier and better to sit with than the alternative. Yeah. You know, I think the whole family can agree that we were all so like thankful and really just like gave you a lot of props for going to make it for making a change because it's a huge yeah. deal and and the whole thing with going from D1 to D3 I know was like very difficult for you to do because you really uh worked very very hard to get yourself into a D1 program. Uh I remember thinking to myself when um you came to us and uh, and the school came to us to give you uh an offer and financial aid, we were really just quite surprised at how generous, how much they wanted you. They wanted you so much that they Mm -hmm. gave you a very generous scholarship, which um, dad and I were really quite surprised. (laughs) Very appreciative. (laughs) And then, wait, but then when, you know, then they came back and I remember they sent you an email, I believe, and asked you like, what else do you need? Like, what do you need? And you said to them, well, it would be so nice if I could get maybe my books covered or or just an a- extra money for that because it's a if you look it up, it's a very expensive school. It is, and, and you just wanted to get closer to what we were paying for you at Seattle University, right? You know, when you went there to meet the coach and everything, uh, tell everyone the story of what actually happened when you arrived and how the whole thing played out with them really wanting you on their team and at that at that school. What yeah. happened? So I started off my day, I planned my own tour of the school and that was really, that was really awesome because I got to like meet a girl who was a student and like got, got to talk to her a lot about it. And then as soon as the tour was over, we went back to like the advancement office and I was just talking to this one lady who I guess I had already corresponded with via email just about um, things with like the application and financial aid and everything. And I asked her after they had given me a large sum of money um, and they reached out saying like, what else could do you need? Um, do you need to appeal for anything? Um, and I'd emailed them back. I was talking to her and I was like, do you know if I can um, talk to anyone who might know where, like, what the status is in regards to my financial aid, kind of where I'm standing? And she was like, yes, actually, come down these stairs with me and you can meet with her right now. <laughs> and so I was That's like, That's pretty incredible, okay. isn't it? It was. It was It was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. The way that everything moved was so smoothly and just very helpful. So I'm talking to this girl who helped me with my application and then she sends me to the girl who reveal like who re- sorry, reviewed my financial aid and my appeal and what I needed. 
And so I'm talking to her and I was just wondering like, what's the status with that? And she was like, she read again, my financial aid appeal with me. And she was like, well, I submitted this to our board for, um, you can submit things, uh, financial aid appeals for two reasons, need-based and merit-based. So whether you need the money or whether you deserve the money. And she was like, and I submitted it for both. So the chance of you getting nice. the money. Yep. <laughs> the chance of I'm you. I'm the need, you're the merit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the chance of you getting what you need and getting what you feel you deserve is very high. So I was like, oh, great. So then I leave that, um, that meeting with her. And then that night I'm with my friend Lucy and we're at some sorority recruitment event that she <laughs> dragged me with to, uh, with her to. And I'm just in the bathroom and then I get an email from the financial aid board and they gave the money that we needed. And that was like maybe two hours after I'd had that conversation okay. with them. That's pretty amazing. I know. Because I do remember like you had requested help at Seattle U. Like you really like you were like, okay, it's an expensive school. My parents are paying a lot of money. Is there anything you can do to help me next year? I remember and you had approached us and said, I think I'm gonna ask for a little bit more help. And um and I I do remember we all had that discussion. Yeah. I said, well sure. I said, you're a student athlete, you you know, you work really hard. Let's see. And they did not move the meter. And so it's really it has to make you feel good that a school wanted you so badly that they waited less than two hours to reach out to uh whatever their donors or yeah. their um you know whatever yeah, their, their endowments board, and their all endowment. that stuff yeah. yeah yeah to give you an answer and they didn't and it was a generous sum they gave you for like books and whatever else mm -hmm. you needed. Yeah I mean it, it, it felt, felt so good. It did feel so good. It felt so kind of refreshing almost. I mean I went to a high school that was very small and if you needed help people gave it to you and Shifting from that to a college where I was just one of the masses and I was just, you know, um, a payer that they needed. Um, that was really difficult. But then, you know, realizing like not every school is like that. And if I'm in the right place, I'm going to be wanted there and they're going to find a way to make it work. And even still, like over the summer, I've gotten like two emails from um, one of the members of the financial aid board telling me to apply for the scholarship because they think that I could get it. And so nice. it's like even Please after- Please tell me you've done that. I have. <laughs> 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 even after like Thank they you. were already so generous, they're like, what else can we give you that would just make this experience just more comfortable for you, more where you can enjoy it more and not feel like, oh my God, like- Isn't you know, that crazy? Stuff. Because crazy. you both have friends who are taking a lot of student loans, who are working many jobs, many hours, to a school that they're just a number. It's how it was for you at Seattle. It's how you your friends are. You have friends that go to different schools that are that are struggling with that, and you're just a number. So it is, mm -hmm. does make you feel special. I take it. It does. Oh yes. And then like even just meeting the girls and the coach, like it was just it was just such a different experience. Like they really, I think a part of me at first was like I think that they only really like. I was like, do they only want me to come here because I just spent a year at a D1 school? But then that was my my perception going into it. But then as soon as I met them, it was that was not the case at all. Like the girls were so sweet, so inviting. I saw them um, like at all the different events that Lucy would take me to. And they were so nice. They would always come up and say hi. I'd be like, how's your visit going? Oh, are you coming to this? Like you should come to this with us, like all these things. And I went during a different time during the summer, but they were having a bicentennial event to celebrate like the birthday of trinity or something and so it was really nice because <laughs> sounds like you took a lot away from that oh, yeah. <laughs> but there was a lot going on and that was even during the summer when a lot of people weren't there um so having her take me around and honestly just seeing that event that was mainly like um like alumni that was there seeing the kind of community that they had even with people who had been out of college for over 20 years, it really like put into perspective, like this isn't just an institution where they're like, just go through, sign a check, get your diploma, you're done. It was very, very different. And so get, being able to meet a bunch of different students and then a bunch of different alumni, like that was just really put into perspective how different of an institution this was and one that I really felt like I would fit into very well. Nice. Well, uh, I remember during the time where you were thinking about making the transition, there was a gray area and you had gone and asked for more money or some sort of token amount. Like I, and I was nervous at the time because I can be completely 100% honest now, 
but I wanted you out of there. Like I did we're not talking want about you Seattle to, University. Yes, Everyone we're talking did. about Seattle yeah. University. Like everybody and their mother who knew you, that we all wanted you out there. Your friends of friends of friends wanted you out of there. So <laughs> because it was just you, you know, uh, forget that your team didn't win a single game in conference and all that other stuff. It's like you just had a really bad run emotionally with the whole thing and everybody was kind of like you're just not that person and none of us wanted that for you especially when you had gone in like we know everybody who knows you knows you're giving it your all you're earnest you are uh pouring yourself into everything and you're a genuine person when you are dealing with others and you weren't receiving a lot of that back that entire year and so to make a long story short, there was a gray area of time where I was worried if they offered you like a token 500 or a thousand dollars or whatever, something that small would have really been, it could have been the clincher to keep you there another year. It would have shown that they meant business about keeping you at Seattle University, you know? Yeah. And when they didn't give her anything, when after she had that meeting, uh, when they didn't give her anything, both you and I were like, yes. I know. We were like, <laughs> oh, we're yeah, like, they yes. called me. We really were. Like, we were all jumping up and yeah. down. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, mom called me and was like, so has Ellie talked to you at all about like anything with Seattle? I was like, she just told me that like she had a meeting and they weren't giving them giving her any more money. She's like, I know. Isn't that amazing? Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. I was like if That's they don't true. give her a penny, then she has no reason to stay. If they, You're right. If they even gave her $500 and said we re- we we want you I here. would have had to continue zipping my lip. I wouldn't have been able to say anything to steer you one way or another. It would have been entirely your decision. Yeah. Well, I think that I was already steering myself in one direction, but I mean, definitely I was like, if they gave me the money, I would have stayed. Not because I was like, they're really investing in me, but because I like think it'd be really financially irresponsible to like leave a school where you're getting a huge scholarship. Yeah. To go to a school where at the time I wasn't even sure if I would get any money for. Right. But then after they gave me the money that I needed and then I got nothing from Seattle, I was like, okay, let me go. Yeah, I mean, Trinity, yeah. Trinity stepped up point yeah. blank. So, mm-hmm. and that was great. So anyway... We're obviously happy for you. <laughs> happier Thanks, than guys. you ever knew probably until just now. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just, you only get four years. You get one crack at a college experience and it was difficult for all of your loved ones to feel you weren't getting a great experience, you know, and f- forget the money and forget all that other stuff. That's unimportant. What matters is like we, we never wanted you coming out after four years and saying, wow, that was a waste, you know? Yeah. Or wow, that was brutal or dismal or whatever the fill in the fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. So obviously uh, we'll know more in the next, in the coming weeks, but yeah. uh, the future looks good. So, yes. Roll bands. <laughs> roll bands. What's, What's that? that? Bantams. Oh. Bantams. Roll bantams. Like <laughs> roll tide that's, roll. That's my yeah. new mascot. <laughs> the, ban- bantam. the bantams. The bantams. What's yeah. a bantam? It's a, it's a, it's a chicken. rooster. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really angry chicken. <laughs> so instead of roll tide, it's roll bantam? Roll bants. Bants. Oh, is that the name of the bantam? Bantam. Roll bants. Oh, this like is going to take a minute. This oh, is going to take, take a minute. minute. <laughs> it's a nickname for Bantam. That's all right. Okay. It, in a month, Denise will be using <laughs> that hashtag everywhere. I will. I will. Just give it a minute. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is your, Mia, what is your mascot at University the of Utah? Utes. The Utes. Oh, yeah. That's right. right. Okay. But you would you have a mascot that yeah. runs around on the Swoop. field? Yeah. Okay. It's a bird. It's okay, a red tail hawk or something. Yeah, like that. something and you like had a that. red hawk. Yeah. I, like your red your your red. campus totally poached her campus's mascot. If I really something, it's Probably. like <laughs> you guys were red hawks and your guy is a red tail hawk or something. Something like that. Yeah. Know, anyway. Yeah. Because uh, my old mascot before it was a red hawk. It was something like really offensive. So they had to change it like during 2020. But isn't Ute? It have it's something a Native to do. American they're, tribe. They're American. That's why I was like, yeah. But we so, talked yeah. about this yeah. in a previous episode. Like they, the tribe works in conjunction with yeah, it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. speaking of which, you've undergone some changes yourself, some big life changes. <laughs> What's happening over there in Salt Lake City? Since we last saw you. Well, yeah. I would like to update and let everyone know that I'm in a new apartment. Yay. Yay. 
I know this has been the thing that's been keeping everyone on their toes. They're like, when's me going to move People out? are worried, genuinely. We get a comment every once in a while. Yes, I'm in a new apartment. Once I get all my furniture and everything set up, I, we still need a couch in the living room. And like, I still need a dresser in my bedroom. I'm going to take a video. I'm going to send it to my parents. And you all will see how beautiful this apartment is. <laughs> <laughs> it is so much better. It's not it's, a slum. No, it's you know, on the, it's still a little on the smaller side, but it's perfect for my roommate and I because it's just us. Like, we have all the space that we need. There's, like, a storage closet right by the front door that we're going to have all of our winter coats and our shoes and cleaning supplies in. Um, it was all refurnished, too. And so the the thing with it was when we went to go see the place, um, we it was just, like, a very last-minute thing. And when we went to go see it, we had two other places. We had two other houses that we were looking at right after. So we were just kind of like, this doesn't work. We have two others. Same thing with the other two. We got there, and um, the property manager, she was super sweet. She was dressed very nicely and professional. So we're like, oh, okay, this will be great. Um, <laughs> she, was, she was interviewing you. Literally. For, for you. <laughs> yeah. So there was oh no line outside of a leasing office of kids complaining about their place? Nope. Yeah. And so she had mentioned that the apartments were, all the units were pre-leased because it was completely refurnished and redone. Um, except for two units and one of them being the only two bedroom, one bath left. And so she was like, so if this is something you want, if you like it when we go through, like you got to jump on it. And we're like, okay, yep, great. She took us through. We looked all around like it was the night. It was so nice. It was like, <laughs> she did send us a video. It was really nice. The, sh yeah. the shower is insane. Brand like, new. It, brand new. My roommate's cousins came through and her cousin's husband was like, I'm so jealous of your shower. We have like the slow closed drawers in the kitchen and like cabinets. And he was like, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous of your countertops. It was really nice to have like an adult tell us that he's jealous of where we're living. <laughs> nice. Um, an adult. Yeah. Funny. So, yeah. So we went through there and we liked it. And then we saw the other two places and it was like the second place I had found. It was like, um, it was a basement unit. And so I realized I would smack my head every time I came down those stairs. How tall are you? Six foot one. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have, you know, ended up with a concussion or two if I lived there. And then the, we saw another place and it was weird because a lot of landlords or property managers, they were trying to sell the location of like all of their places. They're like, location, location. It's great. It's by all these public transits. It's like we pull up and it's like not in a great location. Like oh. it's like in the middle so of switch like, and bait. Yeah, it was like in the middle, in between like you know Salt Lake City a and bait like bait and switch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! That too. It was a bait and switch. <laughs> switch and bait. <laughs> but yeah, so this one guy was trying to sell the location, and it was like no public transportation nearby. Wow. And the thing with my car is that. It doesn't do well, super well in the snow. So I was like, I, wherever we are, if we're far from campus, I need to be by the tracks or by tr public transportation so that I can still get to school and like get to work and all of that without having my car slide all around Salt Lake City. Um, so this place was perfect. We we're a block or two away from a track stop, um, which is like the light rail that can take us all the way up to campus and all the way through um, to the stadium, which will be great for game days. Good it's spot. really, really nice. Uh, so you've already moved in. Yeah. So we got our keys on the 31st of July. And then we did our move out checklist at our old place and said, adios, see you never and <laughs> left. And so then at that point, we were basically moved in and we're like, great. So now all we have to do is unpack, which... I did. I unpacked all my clothes and everything within like, I want to say like two hours. I was oh, just like, you were excited. I was so excited. I just kept going. I was like very much. I felt like I was like experiencing a lot of ADHD because I'd be like, oh, I want to do this right now. I was like, wait, no, I want to do this instead. And so at one point I just looked and I was like, I have like three things that I'm trying to unpack right now. Well, that's good. That's not an enthusiasm <laughs> we all shared when you moved into the first place. No. So. Yeah. So I have a question for you. When you said sayonara to the uh, last place, um, was the jacuzzi blue? The jacuzzi was blue. They fixed it. What? So it had been three they years. started fixing it, I want to say, around like March. Like once we got back from spring break, they started working on it a lot. Because I heard it was green for three years. Yeah, it was. 
It was, um, yeah, so they started working <laughs> on it a lot. There were some moments where I'd walk past it. I'd be like, oh, that's looking a little green again. Then they'd come in and fix it and, like, do, like, chlorine shock and all of that. But it was still, it was freezing. It wasn't a jacuzzi. It was, like, a polar plunge. Oh. So no one The heater wasn't it. working. Aw. So um, are you going to miss that place? No. I uh, I will maybe miss the location just because it was so close to campus super easy like I could walk to campus if I needed to I did many times but even still like I feel like I'm in a great spot location wise now I'm by a lot of like I'm closer into the city basically got it so your college experience is a little different than what Ellie's is going to be she's going to a really small school you're at a big school yeah so tell us a little bit about you're a junior now all right, house school, give us a heads up. But there's some changes. I think there's a second major now involved. Oh, okay, yeah. tell us everything. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yes, I'm a double major now. You go to the University of Utah. Yes. If you didn't know, I go to the University of Utah. Sco Utes. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're holding up the sign for those listening. Yeah. Um, but, yep. But yeah, so I'm going to be a junior in the fall. Um, I'm a majoring in criminology and sociology. And if you missed my last episode, I think I talked about it in that. The goal is law school and the goal. Still the goal. Yes. And the goal from law school is either criminal defense attorney or I've been thinking about a district attorney recently. Ooh, look at you. You're going to be dropping some indictments of your own soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. (laughs) That sounds appealing. (laughs) Um, So, yes. And then I just recently got a job working for my specific college. So both of my majors are under the College of Social and Behavioral Science at the U. You actually, you, the middle child, Mia, actually went out and got a job (laughs) on your own, unsolicited (laughs) by your parents. Tell me about that. Where are you working? What's well, going on? Okay, little backstory. I don't think it was totally unsolicited. I did give her the heads up that she had well, to- Well, yeah. You gave me the heads up, that but dad, internship what? wise. Dad was coming for you. Didn't I say that? Yes, yeah, so you said <laughs> oh, that. Oh, she but, told you I was good Well, gonna- she did, but she said it in terms of internships because really I should have done an internship at this point. I'm going to try and shoot for one for next summer. But yeah, your main your main goal was like internship. See if I can get an internship with someone. something. Because I said dad's coming for you. Yeah, those are my exact words. Yeah, okay. oh my God. we talked about this. It was the weekend where Ellie lost half of her toenail. How's that, by the way? It's growing back. Actually, I didn't think it was going to grow back. Nice. But, you know, okay, life, good. Life throws surprises. Oh my gosh, at you. this is like an episode of like Seinfeld <laughs> or something. Everything's coming back. Um, uh, uh, but anyway, it was the weekend where Ellie lost half her toenail, and Parker had just put it down payment down on the house so you got to fly under the radar one more week but that was the week where that i was, was coming yeah. at you that was well, that was also the week i got the job i think good girl yeah well okay i was also applying to internships and a few jobs like left and right i wasn't announcing it to the entire family because if i wasn't hearing anything back that was like kind of embarrassing. yeah you know I'm yeah no of failure, totally so <laughs> <laughs> nobody likes to Real. not have anything happen yeah sure. so i had applied for a few internships i was also volunteering at this point so i was a volunteer for one of my classes so that was another thing that i had on my plate um but in from the College of Social and Behavioral Science, which I'm under at my school, um, they send out like weekly newsletters about like news and new things happening within the, that specific college. Sure. Um, and I don't normally ever click on them. I just click on them to like, <laughs> you don't read it. You click on the it. job ads. <laughs> no, it's not even job ads. It's like it's not job ads. It's like news and like events and things happening. And then I saw it's like Dean's office is looking to hire a, an office assistant or a student or a student employee. Let us know if you'll be interested or apply. And so I was like, all right, let me let me read about this. And at the time I was taking a research methods course for my sociology major. Um, and so it was a course that like throughout the entire semester, we had our own like research project that we were working on the entire time. Like that was our one assignment of the class. And, um, and I did the entire project like by myself, we could have worked with groups, but I didn't want to because I didn't want anyone dragging me down. Um, (laughs) so it does happen. It's awesome. Yeah. There was a a group, there was a group of like nine kids and I was like, two people are doing the work. Yeah, exactly. And. I know I want to be a lawyer, but I I was really enjoying this re- research class. And so I was like, but I also want to explore like what this is like. Um, and so I applied. 
I got an email on a Friday night at 10 p.m. So obviously I was out with my friends that um, from my boss basically now that um, she wanted to interview me. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. (laughs) Except I cannot respond right now. (laughs) So I set an alarm for the next day. For like 8 30 or 9 a.m to respond to this Look email you. You had to I wake like, up mm-hmm. i woke up responded and went back to sleep <laughs> but um anything and everything that comes with research administration i help out with um and so in the interview she talked a lot about like different things like confidentiality like i would have to go through a lot of training because I so you're work. not going to spill any dirt today is that no okay? no not any like salaries or social security <laughs> numbers sorry if that's what you were looking for but she did mention that i responded to her email really fast i was going to ask you did <laughs> yeah. she like say anything like mm-hmm. how are you how are the other kids that responded because it was a friday night i think she did that on purpose girl probably Maybe. i think so probably yeah. and so Plus she, she was also seeing who responded at 2 p.m on a saturday yeah uh-huh. so. Oh, that's a good one. I was just saying she did it on a Friday to see oh, yeah, who was see. home, who was out, and who would take all weekend to respond. Right. Yeah. And at what time? She said that about, I want to say 20 students had applied for the position and they were only interviewing five. And I was one of the five. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I was like, oh my gosh. And so then it was like, that's great. I got the email and um, they had actually hired two students because they couldn't pick just one. So they hired me and then my coworker. She's been working on a fellowship all summer long, so we haven't worked closely yet. But they hired both of us. And they were like, we would love to have you if you're still interested. Like, please let us know. And I nice. was sitting in class and I was like, yes. Oh, my gosh. It was like my least favorite class of the semester, too. So I was like, this day just got so much better. <laughs> So yeah. How do you like it? How long have you been there now? How many months? Like, I guess my first day would be like May 1st. Really? Okay, so, oh, wow. so three you've months. been there like four months now. Yeah. And so they actually yeah. asked me the other day if I still wanted to work during the fall or my boss did. And then my coworker was like, yes, we need Mia during the fall. Aww. So, and it was really nice because they said that we could work remotely. So then I got the opportunity to surprise Ellie in LA for a few days. I got the opportunity yeah. to visit my mom and Parker for a week with my godmom and like do in Texas. A, yeah, in Texas. Um and do some work here and there. And I mean, I didn't have as much work to do this week because they knew that it was like my last trip before school started. So they're just like, just enjoy your time. They took it easy on you. Yeah, they did. Nice. I We're really proud like of you. It. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm obviously very interested in it. I think there are probably there's a probably a huge segment of the population is like research assistant, kill me. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm glad you're into it. I'm glad you found something you enjoy. So yeah. and that's you know, uh, it feels less like work, I'm sure, because it's something that you were already into from your classwork. So that's great. Yeah. Now that you've been at the university, this is gonna be your third year. Um how do you like it? I mean, I, we always ask this question. I mean, just as parents, we ask like, how's school going? But are you glad you picked a universe, the University of Utah? I am. Tell us why. Just because I feel like even though it is a really big school. How many kids? Like 30K or something. Yeah, right? I want to say like 30, 40K. Yeah, I think there um, is. Yeah. Just because it is a really big school, at least under my specific college, I can't speak for all the other students in any other majors. Um. The college itself, College of Social and Behavioral Science, is really hands-on or tries to be really hands-on with their students. Um, They'll send out different resources, different events that you can attend, all these types of things. So I feel like even though the school is huge and there's so many kids, there are many ways that they can find kids to like get involved and like even with like like student like counseling and stuff like that, like clubs, like there's just like so many things that they do that I feel like can help people like get comfortable. And did you meet, have you met a good group of friends? Like, do you have a good, is it hard with a school that size to meet people? Like, cause I think it's so easy, but it's a lot of kids. I think it, I think honestly, like it can be hard because it's also like, I'm a junior now. And so it's like, everyone has made kind of their friend group since freshman year. And so I feel like a lot of the times, when you're trying to expand a little bit more, it can be harder because it just feels super, super clicky. Wow. Yeah. Even with 40,000 kids. Yes. Okay. And do you, are you happy with your friend group? I am. Oh, good. <laughs> what do you guys do for fun? Are they all into football? Like is every, yeah. is the, is the, yeah. So football season is like the main 
this is like the main thing for us. Like we love football season. We love everything about it. Wait, don't um, you have like a really good football team? Yes. Yeah. I think, yes. Yeah. If you didn't know, uh, the listeners, if you didn't know, Utah is back-to-back Pac-12 champions. Um, we have mm-hmm. chokes twice in the Rose Bowl. You have. But, you know, we're a pretty good team. And it's like the atmosphere is always amazing. And Utah doesn't have like a professional football team in Utah. So everyone in the state tries to go to these Utah games. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big draw. Yeah. Everybody yeah. goes. It's like we don't have a major team besides like Utah and BYU. It still must be fun during the fall. Yeah. It's a lot of fun during the fall. I will say that. <laughs> must great. And I was going to tell you, I was tooling around on TikTok the other day, mm-hmm. as I'm known to do. And uh, <laughs> this guy was listing off the professions where uh, it was an opinion poll on people who did a particular profession and it asked them, was it worth it? Are you happy you had that major? And criminology was number two on that list. Mm. So there you go. Thank you. And I'm sure because it was on TikTok, it was completely based in science. <laughs> <laughs> completely so, reliable. Yeah. So I know. I feel yeah. like criminology has like, like every time I say it, everyone's like, oh, criminology. I'm like, yeah, they're either like that's super cool or like, whoa. Well, when we were coming up, it was called criminal justice and everyone's like, oh, he's just going to be a cop. Yeah. Or whatever, you know. So criminology sounds a little more like biology or yeah. forensic science or something. Mm-hmm. It's a little more yeah. And mystical. I th- yeah, I think that's the same with sociology, too. I don't think anyone, like, really knows what sociology is until I explain it. Like, yeah. I've had some people be like, so what's sociology? I'm like, the study of society. <laughs> Which is still very vague. <laughs> very vague. We yeah. literally just study, like, societal norms, things like that. It's super interesting, though, to me. <laughs> did great. criminal minds have any influence on oh, your I'm choice? Oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> I'm sure it did. But the main thing was is that at Louisville in high school, senior year, I mean, it was COVID, so it's like, I can't really, like, account for, like, the classes, but I took an, I took an anatomy class and an intro to law class. And I did way better in the intro to law class than the anatomy class. And while I was taking anatomy, I was like, this is so boring. I hate this. Sorry, mom. I'm not going into medicine. <sighs> Disappointing for sure. Very what about you? Well, well, I, had, I had her life planned. I had her life planned since she was four. You did. Medicine. You did for mm-hmm. sure. Especially when John Hopkins reached out and said, hey, we want to study your kid or whatever. <laughs> yes. but, uh-huh. uh, but there's still hope because Ellie's changing colleges and I think she's going to be a, a, pre, a pre-med student, oh, right? Awesome. No. Right, Ellie? No. Yeah, yeah Ellie. Actually, yes, girl. no, I will not be doing that. Um, I just want a doctor No in part the of me has interest in doing that. I almost pass out when I get my blood drawn. So I think me performing surgery on someone is probably not the best idea, but I'll be studying international studies. Okay. That is nothing like We're medicine. talking about ambiguous. That is nothing What's like What's that mean? Medicine. That's just like, we're going to Germany. Yeah, I just really want to study abroad. And I think international studies is good because I want to travel. So if I can work for a company that has me handle their international affairs overseas, I think that that would be really cool. But yeah. I honestly don't really even know what I want to do. And I don't think I'll figure it out until a little later in life. So I was like, what's something that's broad enough? that can get me a good job outside of college that like gives me some space to think about what like I really want my job to be you just need to learn Mandarin now could you imagine walking into a business meeting and just like start talking Mandarin no one would ever expect that I think you should do it I I bet it's pretty rare maybe I mean I think had I not already fulfilled my language requirement I'd be a little (laughs) more that's the one thing you knocked out at Seattle you do you know Spanish (laughs) yeah Oh, I, I can furnish a full sentence. I can in furnish Spanish. a house in Spanish. Um, you can furnish a house in Spanish. <laughs> Me is great. challenging you. Yeah, say a full sentence in Spanish right now. Hola, cómo estás? Okay, an actual <laughs> sentence that not okay, okay, someone okay, okay, can okay, pick okay, up okay. from Duolingo. Um, say that we're going to get go. We are going to go to the grocery store in the car. Nosotros vamos. Yes. <laughs> la, uh, uh, la supermercado. La supermercado. Stop it. I'm trying to get her I to do it. Her. N N la N L N L automobile. Ad- automobile. You <laughs> suck. <laughs> Agreed, Mia. Agreed. Uh, Mia, 
Oh. Mia used was taking Spanish in high school and we had workers in our house and one of them was very difficult. He was the contractor and he spoke Spanish. And um, I would say to Mia, because they were working on the bathroom right near her room, I would call her from work and I would say, are they talking about us in Spanish? And then she would say, no, they're actually talking about the job and like the tile and this and that. Yeah. They had no idea that she could understand everything they were saying. Yeah. Well, that was the thing is that I took like two years of honor Spanish. I can understand it sometimes. Sometimes. Like if my teacher was talking to me in a full like in in Spanish, basically, like there was like one time, like one of my classes was like he was like no English allowed whatsoever. And I was like, oh, great. I'm screwed. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to pass this class. Thankfully, he went on like paternity leave halfway through the year. <laughs> and I was like, yes, this is amazing. I get a sub. But like I'll hear it and I'll be able to like hear like understand it. Will I be able to speak back? No. OK. Can yes. I read it sometimes? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm really, really, really good at reading it. Yeah, like I can the, read it. The well. essays and stuff that we would do, I always, I always really liked those. And when I would do the listening exercises, like the listening and the reading and responding, I always performed the best on. But like making my own sentences, writing my own sentences is fine, but trying to speak it, I like can't come up with it on the fly. Yeah. yeah, it's difficult. It's, Plus, it's, it's, uh, it depends on who you're talking to. Like if you're talking to, I mean, obviously in Los Angeles, there's a lot of Mexican folks, but there are some countries in South America where it's so rapid the way they talk, like how fast they're speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of vowels and to keep every, track of yeah. all We've, coming at you all at once. But we learned by living in Los Angeles, not all Spanish is the same. No. Yeah. I mean, like seriously, like the Spanish in Venezuela can be different than the Spanish in Colombia that can be different than the Spanish in Mexico City. And even in Mexico, the people that speak the yeah. Spanish in Mexico City have a different dialect than yeah. the people that speak Spanish in the southern part of the country. It's so interesting. So it's not it's not all the same. Yeah, it's, it's just like all. America, y'all. Yes. Yins. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Y'all. Well, so. I had two Spanish, two different Spanish teachers. One was from Spain and one was from I want to say Venezuela. And they both taught their classes completely oh. different. So it was hard because I had to take three quarters of it. And I went from my first Spanish teacher, who was a girl from Venezuela. My second one, which was a guy from Spain, then back to the girl from Venezuela. So mm. it was really hard because the teaching styles were different. And what they focused on was a lot different. I learned the most with my male teacher from Spain. He did a lot of no PowerPoints, just us talking to each other. And that uh. I really liked. That's where I learned how to furnish a house in Spanish. Yeah. But then I went back to the other woman and like it was just her style of teaching was a lot different it was a lot on like grammar and vocabulary and less on like how to talk to others conversational Conversation. less conversational exactly yeah. so you're happy with where you picked mm -hmm. we're gonna the jury's still out on trinity yeah so see. yeah um how has your summer been we know you've been in la what have you been doing mia tell us about your summer um i took two summer classes online and someone I partied sounds someone awesome studied <laughs> <laughs> yes I let's ask who had, had the better time in uh -huh. summer yeah, yeah, yeah. um so <laughs> i was in, i don't know you like working in research you probably enjoyed summer school yeah summer school honestly was not that bad i took a <laughs> that would have been ellie's hell <laughs> <laughs> um well so i was in utah mainly like all of summer i was in utah for all of summer i was working i had two summer courses one of them was like a first half of summer class that was a forensic anthropology class there was that. And then I took a social theory class, which was like just a requirement for my major that I hadn't completed yet. So, yeah, I mean, I ended both classes. So your summer is really your summer is really short. Yeah. So I, I basically had like two weeks of mm -hmm. no school, which was the first week of summer and this past week. Or and how's it. that sound to you, Ellie? Two weeks of summer. hell. <laughs> hell. Luckily, though, my assignments for my first half class that was the class that was more like rigorous like I had like weekly assignments that I had to complete and things like that with my second class I just had like discussion posts I had to do like at least throughout the summer um so I've really only had summer for like a few weeks so. well to be fair we don't let anyone in our house be a slacker so when Ellie said she was going to LA what did we tell her Got a good job. Yes. Uh, and and you did. did. Yeah. I did so get a job. we did not pay for her to be in LA at all. We did not. You took care of yourself all yeah, summer. So tell with, everyone. with the exception of a, like a small uh, donation at the very yeah. top of summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, it was small because I wasn't working then. I yeah. didn't have a lot to give you. Yeah. So. I like. Had, so while Mia's in class, 
in her studies, you were, tell everyone what you're doing. I got a job working for this company called Tech Volley, which is this new version of volleyball that you play on a curved ping pong table. It's 2v2, and it's pretty much the two same. Two people versus two, two people. Yeah, sorry. For the non-sporties. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two people versus two people. <laughs> and, um, it's pretty much like volleyball, but instead of hitting over a net, you hit on the other side of the of the ping pong table and it's this new way to play and there's a lot of ex-college athletes ex-olympians who maybe their bodies can't handle going pro so they do this and it's really picking up they're actually like um they're starting like five new professional contracts so you can get paid a hundred thousand dollars to just what from yeah from a nine to five five days a week just play and learn how to play tech volley my boss was trying to recruit me to do it she's like after college you should try to do it for a few years and like maybe i might but it's on espn it's on espn it's like it's it's it is really really? yeah the finals i I saw yeah the finals were on the santa monica pier and zach efron went but (laughs) yeah you Um, left that part out i didn't i didn't see i didn't work that tournament that was the one tournament when i when i flew back into la when summer just started that first weekend when i didn't even have the job yet my friends while were all working as um temp workers for the first tournament and that's when Zach Efron was Zach Efron was there. Wow. Yeah, but so my friend well, if Zach Efron's into it. I, I mean, mean it's got to be a big deal. But um <laughs> my friend Charlie got me the job. Shout out Charlie. Um <laughs> Charlie. Love you, Charlie. Hey Charlie, thanks for taking the heat off me this summer. Yeah. Appreciate it. He it was really fun working with him because we would just go to open gyms and we'd set up the table, set up the lines, teach new people how to play, play with them and then sometimes we would go to like grass volleyball tournaments or beach volleyball tournaments and we would just set up a table and we would just play and we would get like people like, "Oh, what is this?" like explain it to us, we get them to sign up and then do all these tournaments and stuff and we tried to like send tables out to maybe like other colleges or clubs where people would want to play it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what I did. And I really, really liked that because it was like a a high concentration of work over only a few days. So I would have like four days where I was working from like 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I would do that for four days in a row. And then I would be like maybe only working twice a week for the next two to three weeks and I would do that again. So I really liked that because it gave me a lot of flexibility and like working with my friend, like it was... It was just us hanging out and getting paid. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. How do, how Those do are the you best play? jobs. Yeah. How do you play? How do you okay, so how do you play? Oh, how do I play? How'd you play on it? Were you playing? Yeah, how are you? Oh, how um, are you? I'm all right at it. I'm surprisingly not as good as I thought I would be, only because it's kind of it's actually like very different from volleyball and everyone who played volleyball who like they were playing it they all agreed they're like it took me like a few weeks to get it down because when you're playing volleyball on a net the whole goal is when there's a block up or there's a lot going on on the other side of the net you try to hit high and deep and over them but when you're playing on this table you have to hit straight down because you have to hit the table on the the other side right like ping pong yes like ping pong so if you're not hitting straight down and like looking down at the floor it's opposite it's, it's the it's, it's the opposite <laughs> and charlie couldn't understand why i thought it was a little challenging at first so, oh. yeah and i was like charlie like you play water polo don't come at me trying to act all tough. <laughs> well i mean no but like he was just like well what's like what is it like why can't you find the table i'm like well it's completely the mechanics are completely different you know um so it was hard but it was honestly it was still really really fun and i was glad that i got to do it and have a job and it 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 was good. Nice. Yeah. Everyone good for you. Nice. That sounds like a lot of fun. You yeah. made a ton of money too. I did. And I'm still waiting for one more paycheck. So, Ooh. Oh, well, they better get on nice. it. I, know. Seamus, I don't have access to your savings account. I'm curious to know how much is in there. We can go into that later. <laughs> 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 so while we were traveling, um, we did try to recruit you two to travel with us. Ellie was like, I'm out. Yep. But Mia did come to Texas for 10 days, and that was really fun. She did. And so then, much fun. And then she came here um, where we currently are in Florida, but then we recruited her to go to Ohio yeah. for a weekend. I'm not sure we recruited her. We basically kidnapped her Dragged and told me. her you were coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Just a quick little 48-hour trip. I know. Yeah. She was expecting just to come and lay by the pool, and then we were like, yeah. you're coming to Ohio with us. And she's like, wait, wait, where's my pool time? Yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry, you're coming to Ohio uh-huh. with us. So we do try to get the kids involved involved in the travel um yeah, some, absolutely some sometimes you guys do it sometimes you don't how was texas i had so much fun in texas i thought it was a great trip okay it was nice i did miss you dad I <laughs> he was, was in, egypt. in egypt you know living life um, living my best life yeah for sure. 
so like not thinking about any of us. <laughs> I, I hate to say you're right, but you were. <laughs> but you are. But I had so much fun with you, Mom. I oh, thought it thanks. was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with Parker. Um, I had never been to Texas before. Your godmother Lori came as well. Yeah, Lori came with. She's always so fun to be around. She of is. Course. She's so I easy. spent like basically like a week and a half, almost two weeks with her because she, her and Amanda were kind enough to let me stay at their house, of course. In Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was the main reason why I went to LA was because um, we were both going to go to Texas and we were both planning. And I was like, why don't we just go together? That just makes a lot of sense. And it was just a girl's trip. It was so much fun. What did you like about it? What was like the highlight? What was that? I would say probably the wrestling. Oh my gosh, that was the highlight that was so for me. Much fun. It was in my top. Was in my top yeah. five. It was in my top five, yeah. like year end recap. Talked a lot about yeah it. the yeah. amateur wrestling, which um, I'm gonna again. I posted a photo of uh, one of the clips of uh, Fernando Parker's coworker wrestling, but I am gonna do a video. I want to do a reel. I just the truth is like I've even mentioned it to Parker. I haven't done a reel of Fernando wrestling because I want to make it so good, and so I really have to take the time. Yeah. You know. Yeah, doing a real going take- through all the videos. Yeah, because we took so, <laughs> so many. <laughs> what was so much? What was fun about it for you? It's probably just like the atmosphere. I really like the guy behind us yelling, like, uh-huh. <laughs> scratch his eyes out. And all of that. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so I would say the wrestling was probably one of my favorite parts. I also loved going around the news station. Oh, that yeah. That was also one of my favorite parts. I know it was shorter. It was like we a got short a little thing. Behind the scenes but of we, Parker's. Yeah, we got a behind the scenes. We got to see Javi do the news like, on air. live. <laughs> and so I thought it was just really cool to see where she works, see, meet everyone that she works with. She always speaks very highly of all of them. Yeah. Um, And like I loved meeting like Taylor. Yeah. Shout out Taylor. <laughs> um, She's one of the anchors. Yeah, the anchor. It was just everyone was so sweet, so nice. and. um. I really enjoyed going around there. Okay. So that was a highlight for you in Texas, a Texas trip. Yeah. Um, going back to LA, what was the highlight for you? Everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that just after having a really hard year, like I just, I wanted to be back with the people that made me being away so hard. And I think just being back with everyone was so much fun. Like I had it was honestly such a different experience because living in LA without any parents was really, really weird because it was it just... It had to have been a lot more it fun. To, oh, it was it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you had no one telling you no. Exactly. And that was weird. And so, it is, isn't it? Um, yeah. And it would be hard sometimes because there would be... I think this only happened like two or three times where there would be a night where everyone would go back to their families and I'd be like... Where do I go? Like, Where I, did you go? To Dawn's? I would go to Shay's. Yeah, I'd go to Shay's. Sometimes I would just go with them, like to their families and stuff. But um, I don't know. I think it was just really nice. Like it was like such a slow lifestyle. Like I just got to go to the beach or just like hang out and go swimming with my friends. And yeah. it was just I think after the year I had, I was really, really, really glad that I got to like be with be with all the people that I missed a lot. And I missed you guys too, obviously. But yeah, not the same. Yeah. It's just, how many calls did you guys get from her all of summer? Like oh three? Zero. <laughs> I got zero. I got one. I got zero. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, I think, but I think you can really relate because as a freshman, when you were a freshman, your first summer after freshman year, it's really impactful, don't you think? Like for you, Mia, when you came back home from you know school as a freshman college student and having that first summer it's like I don't know you're back with your old friends from high school I think Mm -hmm. there's like something to be said about your first summer from college yeah I do agree I think the most impactful for sure was probably Thanksgiving or winter break okay because then at that point it was like summer everyone's like yeah yeah we've seen everyone so okay obviously it is true your your friend group reduced dramatically by summer of your yeah. freshman year and it was your freshman yeah and, and it was year. also hard because a lot of my friends were on the quarter system so it was like i was home a month before they were it was really nice because it was like i could come home and see my friends that were still living at home like rory like i spent a lot of time with rory over uh-huh. the summer last year yeah um shout out rory um but not last year but the freshman year i'm talking about like freshman you were a freshman was last last year was my freshman year of summer oh my gosh i'm thinking it's like two summers ago okay yeah it was last year wow okay yeah 
Um, so you spent time with Rory. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with like her and like other people who had stayed home. Mm-hmm. Um, who went to school locally. Yeah, who went to school locally. It was nice to see all my friends once they came back from school. Yeah. Um, but, you know, summer's always busy. I feel like in L.A., a lot of people are traveling with their families. And it's like, I always felt like my friend group was different from Ellie's friend group because it was like, I don't know. I feel like you guys always planned around each other's trips, like when to get together and stuff. But oh. we would just be like, oh, this person's gone this day and this person's gone this day, like blah, 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 blah. Um, and then this year, for sure, it was ever, like our like my entire friend, high school friend group. Like we were all just like split up, basically. When you were in L.A. this summer, it was just for a week. So you really had narrowed down who you're going to like spend time with because it was mm-hmm. who was in town. Yeah. And a lot of people were not in town. So um a lot of people that I really did want to see were away um out of town abroad um so I yeah I narrowed it down to like I'd say probably like five or six friends that I needed to see um not all of that happened unfortunately so it's like now I'm now I'm just like well now that I live in Utah basically now that I I have steady income and all of this stuff. Like, I, I'll just visit you. Like, I will just visit you at school. You can visit me at school. Oh, you're a big girl. Yeah. <laughs> She's got and a lot also, going on now. She does. It's also like I ha- I didn't, like, visit friends at school, really, my freshman year. Like, this past year, like, I visited Ellie at Seattle. And, like, oh my I gosh, saw you Grace really- at Seattle. But it was, like, I didn't really, like, visit my friends at school or anything like that. And so... Do you think you're going to do that this year? I want to. I think you should. And I want, like, friends to come to Utah, too, at least during, like, fall and football or winter. Yeah. um, Because that'll be really fun. So, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to say this. I know there's something you guys did exciting over the summer together. Do we want to share with everyone what your highlight of the summer was? We saw Taylor Swift. The Eras Tour. And it was amazing. <laughs> it was so good. It was like the best night of my entire life. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. First of all, Ellie, how long were you on the computer getting tickets? Like nine hours. I'm not even kidding. I, I will so go. So proud yeah, of you. Like, I did so it for you. you. Oh, <laughs> so the one time she's been super responsible. That, hey, that may true. be true. It is true. That may be true. That is totally true. Yeah. It's completely worth it. <laughs> so I woke up early. I got verified fan like pre-sale meeting, which means for those of you who don't know, if you get on the queue and you get in and there's tickets left, you can buy tickets for original price, which is crazy. Yeah. Um. So I got in at like seven or eight a.m. And I didn't get the tickets until my like 4 p.m. class started. So my roommate, Chloe, shout out Chloe, let me use her hotspot the entire day. I was one, I saw me and probably 30 other girls around my campus walking around with a phone and a laptop out. And I knew what they were doing. (laughs) Because you have to explain really quick, Mia explained it to me about you can't change like um, devices, like in the middle of it. You can't, you have to be, you can't change Wi-Fi's, you can't change devices, you can't refresh, never refresh. Not that re- is like the so you one don't rule. Refresh the page. That no. is the one rule that you, you will cannot go back do. To the fr- back to the back of the line. And Ooh. so I was like, I can't do this. I had I had classes, I had practice, I had meetings with my coaches. So you gotta I- keep your devices plugged in and yep. the displays. Did you on notice all day. ahead of time? Oh yes. I did my research. Also, so- Chloe is a K pop stan, and that's just a different breed of concert lovers. So she also gave me the rundown of what she would do, and she was like, You need to do all of this and have this portable charger she gave me that too and like she was so helpful it was a mission Wait a second. she knew what to do so when you say her hotspot, does that mean her telephone yeah so her so this girl um, was without her phone the entire she day she would just come with me everywhere we would just walk everywhere <laughs> what if she got a text message she's oh, going to your, she got, you going to your st- statistical like, analysis class with you yeah, it's yeah. like wi-fi so it's like ellie's computer is hooked up to her phone as but Wi-Fi. I know, but Chloe can't use no, her phone. she can, can still use her phone. I couldn't use my computer, so I just sat in my classes and was like, oh, I remember all of this. Wait a second. So Chloe would go to class without her phone? Because well, you guys, your phone is had, glued to your we hand. We had all the same classes for a semester, remember? Oh, okay. So we would just sit next oh, you to got each lucky. other. I did you get lucky. You got really lucky. Yeah, I had, a, I had a meeting with my coaches, and I like I told them the rundown. I was like, what this is they, staying open. What if they said to you, no, Ellie? Uh, I was like, we can reschedule. Like, oh, there's guys- no way. But they were actually really cool about it. They like it moved a little. They're like, oh, did you get the tickets? Like, all this stuff. So did everybody <laughs> understand the gravity of yes. this? Because I don't think I didn't realize the gravity until after the crash and when it was on the news. But during, did people understand the gravity? Like your teachers? Well, my teacher, no, because I 
did get called out by a professor, but so he didn't understand. He wasn't really cool like that. But all my mm. other friends and everyone in my class knew what was going on. <laughs> they like, did. And we all had our computers out and like someone would just be like, I got the tickets. I got the tickets. Oh. And like during our break, all my friends like crowded around my computer, like, let me see your seats, all this stuff. And then my professor was like, let's make sure we're on task in class or like we're going to lose computer privileges. And I was like, oh, I'm well, out. it's a one time thing, like whatever. <laughs> so I got the tickets and this was back in like October or, or November. And of I did it on 20. 2022. So <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So I had these tickets forever. And when then, was the concert? Um, July, July 14th, 2023. <laughs> delayed grat- gratification. Yes. Right? But I, we got the tickets for original price. I mean, I looked up the, the tickets that we got. Um, I looked them up immediately after on like Ticketmaster. Yeah. And they were going for like $4,000 and we did not even pay, pay close to that much money. And she got really good seats And I got really us. good seats. And so I don't even know how I did that because I mean, as soon as I got let into the queue and I had to pick seats, I swear I blacked out. And I had to look up the seats after because I was like, I don't even know what I just bought. Oh. My card got declined for fraud. Like, I was like, what's going on? No. Like, yes. What happened? How did you it's just... Get- I never, ever spent that much money on my card before. Oh, did- yeah. It's like that much <laughs> money so, at once. That how did you figure it out? I, they texted me. They, I get immediate oh. text messages oh, from Chase. Lucky, and I was like, yes. Sometimes those are delayed. <laughs> yes. yes. I know. And I was like, yes, LA, that so was me. Lucky. And then I got to go back in and get the tickets. But so we had a lot of time to come up with our outfit to plan we stayed with her roommate in castle rock and we just because you went to the Colorado, denver concert yeah. the denver yes. concert you okay you chose so, denver yes well actually what happens is you can pick three um when you're a verified fan you can pick three cities that you want to go to so we picked um los angeles chicago because mom has a lot of family in chicago and then denver because we did a concert the year before in denver where we just stayed with Sierra. Yeah. You went so, to see skinny kittens or whatever. Rainbow name. kitten surprise. <laughs> but yeah, super close. <laughs> um, and I ended up just getting Denver, which honestly I was super glad because um there Los Angeles, she added like five shows, so that was crazy. And same with Chicago. And so I was like, Denver's perfect. Like I think it we'll is. get good seats and stuff. And we did. And we went and it was so the amazing. It was very smooth sailing. Like the longest line that we had to wait in was just getting into the getting into venue. the venue and then we got food we got our merch and we found our seats what did you get merch nice. tell us i got a hoodie <laughs> and i got a t-shirt um we really also cute. got a poster oh yeah i got a poster you both too. looked at each other just now like i can't believe we don't have our merch on i know i went to the room. other room too, <laughs> yeah but, you're not getting it <laughs> um but yeah so i got a t-shirt and a poster and she got a sweatshirt i got like the sweatshirt version of her t-shirt yeah okay. so we're matching um but yeah. What, okay. What did you dress up as? Because when I see other kids with Taylor Swift sweatshirts on, I'll always engage with them. I'll say, oh, my daughter's went like, oh, what they dress up as? Like everybody has like the An lingo. Era. Like they're like, what, what they, what was, what was their era? And I never get it right. I <laughs> never get it right. Okay. Say what you were. I was speak now mainly. That was the era I was trying to go for. So I had a purple skirt on, but I also found this adorable Bla- like sparkly blazer that looks like the one that she wears for this song called the man um so i had parker actually helped me find that when i was in texas mm. she was like you need to get that hold on to that don't let that go and I was like, <laughs> wow. so i had that so i was like speak now ish yes i was 1989 because i had a silver sparkly skirt which was so cute and then I had the I Heart TS shirt that Tom Hiddleston wore. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, so I was I was 1989, which is so fitting because that's her next re-record. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Tom Huddleston? Hiddleston. It's mm. Loki. An Loki. Loki. Yeah, he's an actor. Oh, he plays Loki? Yeah. Yeah, he oh, okay. was like her ex-boyfriend from the era of that album that I was just no talking about. Like he dated weeks, her? Three weeks. Yeah. Literally three weeks. But he, he, wore, he wore an I Heart TS shirt. Was it enough to get a song written about him? Yes. yes. Getaway car. Yeah. Getaway car. My favorite song of all time. She, she didn't sing yeah. it. Does she show. smoke them in it? Kind of. Yeah. Is she burnt? Really, she smokes she herself. Smokes herself. Yeah. She smokes herself. What she smokes herself. she Well, what she says is, you can't be surprised that I'm leaving you for another man because when you met me, I was leaving another man for you. Oh. Ooh. Okay. okay. Think about the place where you first met me. <laughs> Nothing good starts in a getaway exactly. car. But she he only so got one deep. song because he's not really that important. But yeah. Okay. But he yeah, only got the, one song. the whole thing was like he wore this when they were in the Hamptons, like for like a uh, Fourth of July. Mm-hmm. He wore an I Heart TS 
okay. t-shirt and it was all over the internet. Like, I can't believe he wore that. Who would wear that? How embarrassing. Like they were just really giving it to him that he wore this shirt. And so then she wore it in one of her videos. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Like yeah. she takes everything and just flips it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So she wore it in one of her videos and then I was like, I really want to wear it. So the lead up was huge. Eight, six, six months, seven months. Yeah. Eight, Eight months. Okay. Was it well, everything? It, yeah. yeah. And was more. it worth it? whoa it was really it was so yes. fun and it was hard too because it was like our show was so much later in the tour so it was like we had seen a lot of spoilers basically on tiktok and stuff like that but even still i was surprised by a lot like she does this like spoken word poem thing for one of her songs and i was like wait this is seven she doesn't sing seven on the set list and ellie was like it's a poem. I was like, oh, I didn't know she did this. And it was like the dancers and like the visuals were just insane on the screen. Like the dancers were amazing. She's an amazing Aww. performer. Yeah. There were things about the her set that Mia knew that I didn't know that I was like, I had no idea she even sang this song. And like Mia knew it. And mm -hmm. so it was just it was really, really fun. I think what made it even more fun was that like everyone around us had also either paid thousands of dollars or sat on Ticketmaster for nine hours. There weren't a lot of people who could just go to a bunch of shows or like, oh, I just oh. want to go see Taylor Swift. Like a lot of people had to really like work hard, put, put in yeah. thought to it. And so I think that was so fun is that everyone around us were like, oh, like finally it's here. And that's what we were like. We we're like, oh, I can't believe we're in these seats for as like cheap as we got them mm -hmm. for. And like that was just like it was everyone was just in the best mood, like complimenting each other. Like, yeah, oh, it was just so was nice. Great. And the openers were really good, too. Yeah, we saw Gracie abrams and muna and i like i kind of liked gracie abrams but i never really heard any of muna's songs but then now i'm a fan so yeah i liked gracie too are you gonna go to another concert if we can if we can somehow i think that she's gonna do more L not la u.s tours um, okay dates dates shows yes um hopefully because it's like kind of like harry styles harry styles did love on tour for what three years right? yeah that was crazy so i feel like she'll do something similar to that just because so many people, at least in the U.S., like did not get tickets. That it's wanted true. Tickets. It's um, true. Um, it's she's, a, yeah, she's very appreciative of her fans too. So I know she'll do something. Special. It's really fun. Like your community of fans is so much fun. Like the kids and the adults mm -hmm. are all like really into it. I mm -hmm. love it. Yeah, yeah. no. It was awesome. I want to go with you guys next time. I know. You I, know I really want I know. to. I wanted everyone to go, but I was just like. I don't even know. It was like kind of Mia and I's plan. And yeah. then I was just surprised that I even got in to get the tickets. Sure, and I was course. like, there was two tickets available in this really good section. I was like, we're going to get those. Yeah. But definitely nice. it would be fun if all of us went yeah. together. Yeah, it would be. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, I think I speak for both of us when I say we love you both very much. We're very proud of both of you. <laughs> we are. And uh, we are so grateful to have one day with you today. So yes. we should wrap this up so we can enjoy the rest of our time with both of you together and get Mia off on her plane tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining the Skip Town All-Stars this week. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. It's so fun. We love you guys too. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. This was so fun. You're welcome. Take them out, girls. Empty nest, full tank. <laughs> Boom. See ya. <laughs> Adios. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.